When I was nine years old, I, my family and I realized that I, I was diagnosed with Tourette's syndrome. It took a while before I came comfortable living with the disorder, and even now I'm quite shocked that I can stand in front of all of you and tell you about my Tourette's. But I've realized that it has actually changed me in so many positive ways and presented me with so many great opportunities like tonight. And it's because of this that I can stand up here and say, I'm proud to have Tourette's syndrome. And I think I can instill that same positivity in the thousands of people around the world with Tourette's. has gotten very little attention. It's something that very few people really have a grasp on. It's always about fear of the unknown. You know, the less people know, the more assumptions they make. And so. why I'm riding a bicycle, why I don't have this and that or whatever. Worry about how you can help people living with Tourette's. I don't worry about the mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers around you that have Tourette's. The people that need help, that don't know what to do, that live in fear and security. Worry about that. That's what you need to be worried about. looks that they give you it's just ugh, it never used to bother me before but now it's like you can say it's never quite in my head it's difficult sometimes to focus on what it is they're wanting to focus on because they're distracted or other people around them are distracted Tourette syndrome is a recently um, understood syndrome it is 
uh, something that a, a person is born with. Voluntary vocal and motor tics that persist over time. I'm going to explain to rest in my daily life uh, for you uh, using the logo of the Dutch Tourette Syndrome of, uh, Association. Uh, it contains of circles and they are empty for a reason because uh, Tourette is different for every patient. I think, yeah, I think it would lead what I feel and what I see is low self-confidence, uh, the want, the desperate want to be like uh, whatever normal is, right? You know, a lot of complicated jargon that you know, you're, you're supposed to use as a doctor, you know, words like Tourette syndrome and words like attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, and obsessive compulsive disorder, and you know, kids' eyes just start to glaze over, like what the heck does all that mean? And so um, the way that I tend to describe all of those disorders that often go along together um, in a simple way that's easy for, for kids to get is, is like being a, a leaky brake. That um, uh, it's okay, it's just like uh, you know, you need brakes on a car to stop a car, and if those uh, brakes aren't working, then uh, you know, trouble will ensue. The same is true for people that you know, we've learned as doctors over the last 10 years, 15 years or so, that people have brakes too up here in the brains. And when those brakes are a little leaky, you know, sometimes it's hard to stop. As far as I know, uh, students with this, people with this, have um, any manner of ticks, for want of a better word. It could be a blinking eye, it could be something that they need to say over and over. Um, when it gets to extremes, it's language that's um, uh, beyond their control. I think on top of being, especially because I'm uh, with teenagers all the time, I think being teenagers is hard enough. I think someone with Tourette's, uh, they could, it's an, an added with. Um, however, I believe that no one should be ashamed of it, and I believe that with more education out there, uh, students would um, really benefit and know that they're not alone. Here is a list of 10 things that I think that only people with Tourette's will really understand. Being constantly compared to animals because of your vocal tics. The two minute silence for Remembrance Day is near impossible. No one says bless you when you sneeze because everyone around you thinks it was a tick. When everyone has stopped clapping after a performance and you're still going because the crowd has triggered your clapping tick. Singing a song without ticking is worthy of an award. The phrase, sorry it was a tick, starts to sound really weird to you because you've said it so many times. No one responds when you actually swear because people think that it's just your coprolalia acting up again. When someone says your ticks have been really good lately, and from that moment on, the ticks come flooding back. The inability to hide emotion. When you're happy, anxious, excited or angry, your tics are worse than normal and everyone notices. Doing something outrageous because you already stand out and you really don't care what people think. Uh, whatever you don't seem like you don't have, you got life in your body. God woke you up this morning. Every day above ground is a good day. Or oh, you can't do something with your life. Do something with your life. It's up to you. You can do it. Stop worrying about your situation, what you don't have, what other people got. Do what you need to do. Do what you can do. You can do this. Ticks. 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 Involuntary vocal and motor tics that persist over time. Arm tics, leg tics, eye tics, eyebrow tics, all over the ballpark. You can use the uh, the itch scratch analogy because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't, you know, they think, mm -hmm. they think when you're ticking it's almost like maybe a seizure. Yeah. 
and it's not. The, the, mm -hmm. almost, the tick is almost like scratching the itch. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the, the real problem with Tourette's is mm -hmm. completely invisible, which is this you know, itch <laughs> in your brain telling you, shake yeah. your head, shake your head, or <laughs> you know, whatever it is mm -hmm. that uh, you have mm -hmm. to yeah. get rid of. Most of the time, I will know that I am ticking because I get a lot of sensations in my body. Sometimes it feels like pins and needles, sometimes it feels like electric shocks, sometimes it just feels like a build up of energy. Um, so it's very, very tactile in my body. Um, I can feel it all around me. So that keeps me grounded and present. So I'm very aware of when I'm ticking most of the time. <coughs> But there are times when I'm tired or stressed or having a really, really bad tick day that I'll have a tick and don't know that I'm doing it and someone else will point it out for me. Ticks, they aren't completely random. They, they, mm. Ticks tend to, if, if you do something a lot mm. and kind of the same way each time, so if something's frequent and mm. something's stereotyped, it's more likely that it'll get the Tourette's attention and become mm -hmm. a tick. So here are five excuses for your vocal tics. I am secretly a metal detector and every time I make a weird noise, it means there's buried treasure nearby. I may have swallowed my dog's squeak toy. I have a bet with a friend to see how many times I can swear in a minute. My friend is winning. Did I mention my friend was Tourette syndrome? I have contamination OCD, which means handshakes are off the cards. So, that noise I just made? Yeah, that's my substitution for handshakes. I was just checking I hadn't gone deaf. Did you hear that? So there you have it. Five excuses for vocal tics. But in all seriousness, guys, I wouldn't make an excuse for your Tourette syndrome. You should embrace your tics and be honest with those around you, but most importantly, be honest with yourself. Um, Tourette's is, comes with a number of different disorders. Many students with Tourette's also have um, struggles with attention deficit, um, obsessive compulsive disorders, a variety of different learning disorders. They may have um, math difficulties, reading comprehension difficulties. I think maybe all tied to the fact that they have trouble sustaining attention because their body is um, ticking when and t it takes their attention away from what they need to do. Mm -hmm. So once I've told kids about leaky brakes, I'll tell them, okay, so if you have a leaky brake over your body, you know, it's not quite stopping when you want it to, mm -hmm. that's Tourette's. But mm -hmm. there's other leaky brakes you can have too, that if, if you can't put the brakes on your attention and, you know, you're, you're going all over the place, you know, boy, what's that? What's that? Oh, that title looks like a squirrel, all this sort of stuff. That's a type of ADHD. if you're firing before you aim. So, you know, everyone has dumb ideas sometimes pop in their head. Mm -hmm. you, know, you walk into a room, see a fan, you're like, hmm, should I stick my finger in the fan? <laughs> I mean, you know, of course that's a dumb idea, but if you don't have brakes over your impulses, you don't have a chance to think to yourself, hmm, that's a dumb idea, you just mm -hmm. ah. And that's another type of ADHD. <laughs> OCD, uh, um, I, I see a very heavily uh, heavily dependent on routine. Um, so you make the uh, classroom uh, uh, not uh, not that I don't like making it spontaneous, but for for people with Tourette's or with OCD, and uh, they need routine. They need to feel comfort. They need to have no surprises coming at them. Um, uh, OCD. Uh, it could be as much, as little as I've got uh, some dirt on my pants and I need to go to the bathroom now to clean it. Okay, yes you can. 
and I didn't think I had OCD until I made this speech. Obsessive compulsive disorder, that's really more a leaky break over your thoughts. So you get a thought stuck in your head that just won't go away. You know, for kids that don't have OCD that need to understand it, I often say it's like getting a song stuck in your head you really hate. <laughs> but, you know, with OCD, it's like having a hundred different annoying songs stuck mm -hmm. in your head that, you know, might, might be, they might be annoying, but they also might be making you, you know, feel guilty or freaking you out or, or making you worried or scared, whatever. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing probably that I deal with a lot with these kids is that obviously this sounds like a lot of crap to deal with, and it is. I mean, um, a, a lot of kids that I work with, you know, they're working a lot harder than the other kids in the classroom, mm -hmm. and uh, people don't always appreciate that. And so, if you're if you're having to spend all day trying to you know do what every other normie kid is doing, like you know, listen to the teacher and you know make friends and all that sort of stuff, plus you're trying to fight your tics and fight your attention and fight your impulses and mm -hmm. fight your thoughts. That's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It's like having 15 different people talking to you at once trying to sort it all out. Mm -hmm. And um, so these kids often, people will say they have very low frustration tolerance or they'll, they'll blow up, they'll rage, they have anger management issues. But really, that's mm -hmm. not it at all. It's, it's, it's what I like to call a natural reaction to an abnormal circumstance where you know anyone who had all that crap on their plate to deal with all day and none of it would ever go away anyone's gonna blow mm -hmm. you know that that's gonna be hard for anyone and so um, you know those sorts of issues are things again for other people to help you know to help them understand what's really going on this isn't a kid just with bad attitude but also then you know if, if, if this kid has so much on his plate and that's what's making him blow up he, he needs a few fewer things on his plate and, and that's my job to help mm -hmm. with that. Love your kids. I know they have to rest in their back. They can't help it and neither can you. Cut, cut that off. There's nothing you can do about that noise and that movement we make. Just try to accept it. Your kids need you to love them, support them, and help them. Because they have enough trial tribulation, hell or high water that they deal with every day in the world that they live in the time that they deal with, go to school, church, home, work, play, whatever they do. They need you to be positive. In the past, maybe people would have hit it, uh, would have blamed themselves. Um, it was a lot of guilt associated. That often this is uh, beyond their control. Um, and I think that it used to be that students with Tourette's um, suffered. Well, one of the things I find hardest for um, students is initially they feel very different and they're uncomfortable sharing the fact that they have Tourette's because it, it feels, um, I, I think there's a fear they might be rejected if other people knew they had Tourette's so a lot of their time and attention is focused on holding in the ticks. The challenge would be that the teacher has an opportunity to get to know that student really, really well. I think educators are starting to figure out that these children aren't saying and or doing things to be difficult and obnoxious. I don't think it matters if you have Tourette's or you have ADD or OCD or uh, purple hair. Um, it's our job as teachers to really learn who our students are. do everything that they need me to do. So it really comes from them. I need this from you. I need you to write, give me the notes. That's never happened. I'm, 
whatever they've asked for, I can do that. Being extremely patient would be a, a very good plus as a teacher. Read through the Tourette's Foundation. There's a Tourette's for Educators Handbook, and they should get some tips and ideas for that. Um, I think another thing is just educating yourself about Tourette's, um, getting to know the students, finding out their comfort level, um, what would they like to do, the, do they need tick breaks, um, are there particular things that are stressful for them that um, kind of um, cause the tics to happen because um, tics and anxiety go hand in hand. Um, I've had kids who just gave me a single signal and would leave the room and needed to just give vent and could come back in because I think it must be insurmountably hard to contain that, to master whatever is um, causing that. I guess make your classroom friendly for people with Tourette's. I mean, many busy classrooms where kids are working in groups, kids can easily tick and it shouldn't be bothersome to anyone. Talk with the student, talk with their parents, and find out what's best for the, the student. I think educating the students themselves, if they have a student in the classroom and they, you know, they I, I just, I don't like to see anyone being picked on or misread, okay, so that one person may think is rude is actually probably not rude, it's part of like maybe they have to get some dirt off their hands right away and maybe they push someone aside so well okay so we can work on that but other people should know that maybe that is at that moment that person's greatest um, thing that they have to situation they have to overcome. I think as soon as somebody gets to know somebody very well those ticks just become part of who we are because we all have idiosyncrasies and I think they just start to be something that is less and less distracting. I think it's gotten very little attention. It's something that very few people really have a grasp on. It's about fear of the unknown. You know, the less people know, the more assumptions they make. And so I think it's kind of caught in that loop right now. That's a good question. As soon as you think you know everything, a pretty surefire indication that you don't. Any disparaging words, I straighten <laughs> people out and say, okay, just a minute, just a minute. That the um, 
historically that um, the things that we have believed about Tourette's or about anything else, you know, that we've taken it to such drama and such extreme and that um, that's not really helpful, right? We've still got some serious learning to do about. Speak <laughs> out, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Just never go, oh, hello, okay, bye. No, no. You just don't do that. Tell the teacher. Oh, yeah. Tell yourself. Inform mm -hmm. those in power, I guess. We need to ensure that there is support uh, for those students who are facing different challenges that we might not even be aware of. Um, and it could be anything. It could be any anything at all. It could be that you're you know, your race, your sexual orientation, your religious background. We all carry so many different parts of, of who we are. We like everything to be a muchness. We like this same. We don't, um, we don't like any child that's different. And I think, I, sh I hope that we're getting to that point where we celebrate those differences. And we're paying attention to our attitudes, our behaviors towards one another. And I guess for me it just really it comes right down to respect and, uh, and responsibility. And we have a responsibility to know and understand things and to care about compassionately and to care about others. And then it's our job to be respectful of those challenges. If someone comes forward and, uh, you know, would like to work at the station, um, Step one is to set aside any kinds of stereotypes. So if they say, for instance, they have Tourette's, great, you know, that's uh, that's interesting. I haven't had anybody here before with Tourette's. And then, you know, work with them, get to know them. And in that way, just get to know, you know, A, that nobody's any different than anybody else, and B, that, uh, you know, these are kinds of challenges that uh, we all have our own things that we need to deal with on a daily basis. So it's just another way of really learning something, getting enlightened. Um, especially at the moment because I'm feeling really tired and I'm in pain quite a lot mm -hmm. with my Tourette's so I have to just take it one step at a time and prioritise things uh, but also just do the things that I love um, like getting together with my friends, uh, having some time with my family, filming is another big thing that really helps me. Um, it's just finding things that work for you and that distract you and that just keep your life as normal as possible because if you start restricting yourself and thinking oh I have ticks I can't do this I have ticks I don't want to do this that's when you will see a greater impact in your life and that'll probably affect you more than just giving it a go and getting out there and just trying things and doing the things that you really enjoy My biggest thing is um, it's a very small part of you. Uh, while you may have Tourette syndrome, you're also a daughter, a friend, an artist, a musician, an athlete, and let Tourette's remain that small part of you. Learn about Tourette's, find out um, what things you can do to make it so it's not so much of an obstacle and then go on with your life and concentrate on all the good positive things you have in life and don't let it get in the way of achieving your dreams. that everybody's to fight straight great battles and some of our battles come in a chunk with a massive piece of grief or with um, a crisis in our family um, and some of our battles come um, in with disease where you're incapacitated for three weeks and in the hospital and getting leveled out and getting your system that um, the more we learn to fight it and gain control the stronger it makes us feel if we can just get through it. And every battle makes us 
that much stronger. <laughs>
cut. <laughs>